Are you ready? <coughs> okay. Uh, so this is the town of Farmington Town Board meeting for April 26, 2022. First thing on the agenda is a public hearing. I'll have the town clerk read the notice. Please take notice the Farmington Town Board will hold a public hearing on April 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. at the Farmington <coughs> Town Hall, 1000 County Road 8, Farmington, New York 14425, to consider proposed revisions of the draft local law entitled A Local Law Amending Chapter 165, Zoning Law, Article 3, Section 165 12, Zoning Map. By rezoning three parcels of land identified as tax map account numbers 29.00-01-39, 29.00-1-40 from general business to incentive zoning. Any resident of the town of Farmington shall be entitled to be heard upon this matter at such public hearing. This by resolution of town board of the town of Farmington. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, so tonight we have the uh, developer's engineer here to give us a presentation. Um, public is welcome, either online or in person here, to uh, comment and direct the questions to myself. And uh, we have up to three minutes to make comments. And we'll go through everybody first and then do a second round if we have to, for additional questions. Mike, welcome. Good evening. Mike Montelto with Costas Engineering here this evening on behalf of the client market center LLC for uh, the incentive zoning of uh, Farmington Market Center, currently uh, probably better known as the uh, Tops Plus. Um, a little history uh, for folks who may not be as familiar with it. Uh, we started this process formally with the town uh, in January of 2019 for incentive zoning for the same uh, parcel. Uh, the project uh, was heard by town board, referred to planning board, reviewed by Ontario County Planning, had come back to town board um, with a recommendation in favor of incentive zoning. Um, you know, again, like I said, starting in January of 2019. Uh, through February into April of 2019, due to uh, the economics associated with the improvements necessary for the incentive plan, um, the developer did not advance it further with the town. Um, fast forward three years later to January uh, of this year, we resubmitted a revised incentive zoning plan for the same parcels. Um, had the privilege of the floor from the town board on February 8th. Um, it was referred to the planning board for uh, recommendation as to whether or not incentive zoning was an appropriate use for the parcel. The planning board reviewed a uh, preliminary conceptual plan for the project, made a referral back to the town board, uh, recommending that they were in favor of the use of incentive zoning for this parcel and that it allowed, and I'm going to paraphrase without reading the, the full resolution, but it allowed for a comprehensive plan to be utilized for the development of the park for the overall lands rather than segmented review as individual uses came in. Uh, it was in harmony with the town's comprehensive plan and it furthered um, the objectives of the newly approved um, Main Street overlay district regulations that apply within this area. Um, resolution to advance it to a public <clears throat> hearing and refer it to Ontario County Planning was done by the town board. We appeared before um, the Ontario County Planning Board um, on April 13th. They reviewed it, uh, recommended again back to the town board like they did three years ago. Uh, for approval with comments to be considered should the project continue to move forward. So that's a little bit of the history. Um, <clears throat> what has changed in the project or what, uh, since we asked the town board to consider this as an incentive zoning project <clears throat> in 2019 is a few of the project elements have uh, changed. Primarily, the uh, at the time, in 2019, when we were originally considering incentive zoning, 
we were having a signalized intersection on our parcel and uh, approximately an acre of land was going to be dedicated to the town of Farmington to allow furtherance of a transportation plan for cross lot access. There were no plans for the property to the east of us for development at that time. Subsequent to that, the landowners to the east have developed site plans, have obtained uh, site plan approvals, moved forward with constructing uh, the signalized intersection themselves. It moved approximately 150 feet to the east off of our parcel. So uh, then there were a couple of changes to our plan. Canandaigua National Bank was originally planned to be at our main entrance to the plaza. They've located uh, to the eastern portion of the site. We had a plan for an approximately 5,000 square foot uh, national type chain restaurant that would have been in this corner. That use has been eliminated from the plan. Um, Tops fueling kiosk, which was on, you know, was a part of the plan in 2019, has been shifted a little bit further to the east, increasing some of the separation to the uh, burned dairy uh, store. We uh, the, the far use to the west is the same as it was. It's a, a 4,700 square foot, approximately, you know, two tenant uh, building with a drive through. And then we uh, designed in a specialty uh, coffee or that type of drive through operation, you know, where Canandaigua National Bank was. We had a office building since the plans next door are primarily office building. That doesn't seem to make sense. So we revised that uh, and have a retail plaza expansion. Those are primarily the changes to the plan. Um, the overall square footages, uh, primarily similar to what they were in the original, original ask for incentive zoning. The building setbacks from Route 96 have actually been increased and are in compliance with the new, newly uh, enacted Main Street Overlay District. Uh, you know, one of the things that this plan does do from an incentive standpoint is it allows for the furtherance of that plan by allowing us to you know, have these buildings you know, in, in, the front of, pardon me, in front of the parcel. Um, we're constructing pedestrian links down Mertensia Road, uh, public sidewalk connecting uh, across the front, um, the general guidelines of the Main Street Overlay District in terms of landscaping, lighting, they're providing uh, financial contribution for additional light poles uh, within the within the area to further that portion of things. Um, it's important to note too that through this incentive zoning, you know, we're not asking for uses that are not already permitted. We're not asking for excess lot coverage. We're not asking for you know, general relief from bulk area requirements. What we're doing is primarily asking that instead of every time each use comes in, we're happy to get an independent use permit for the top fueling kiosk or a bank ATM, but that's all being looked at comprehensively in an overall plan. Uh, in 2019, there was some discussion relative to whether or not you know, what what the tops fuel kiosk meant and was it necessary? You know, was it did it create issues with you know burned dairy and you know, the other you know, gas station further to the east? I believe you know, the dialogue in that time we had uh, representatives here from the store managers from tops and from tops corporate. You know, they don't they're not competing, you know, they don't really compete with burned dairy or whatever it's a discounted fuel price to people who've already shopped in the store. Right? It's a convenience item that uh, their customers have continued to ask for. I believe you know, the, the discussion at the time was that you know, that was a, a lack of our term capitalism that's kind of at its best in terms of you know, providing other options you know, for folks. Um, we have had extensive dialogue with the town. Uh, we are in, in receipt of uh, 
memo from the folks next door relative to uh, cost sharing abilities or uh, the traffic generated by uh, our development and their development and whether or not the um, incentives that the town is considering is equitable. We have engaged uh, SRF associates. Uh, she's, they're also the traffic engineers for the for the property to the east. Uh, and so we've, we've had some dialogue with them uh, and they are engaged to you know, provide that additional information for uh, discussions relative to uh, whether or not that's an equitable share relative to and, you know, where our traffic generations would, would be going. At this point, I guess I'd like to conclude my formal presentation and turn it over for questions, comments. You know, again, we've been at this for a number of years and it's substantially the same you know, project as it was when it was originally presented. You know, the major change is that the uh, intersection has been moved to the adjoining property. However, you know, one of the major objectives uh, from the municipal standpoint has been a comprehensive traffic plan and you know, the aligning with the, the studies that have been done relative to you know, the signalization and access management on Route 96. This plan, you know, Mike, so speak to the existing entrance on 96 yeah. and how that changed from 19 to now. Yeah, so in 2019, originally the access was going to be a right in left and right out it is now going to only be right in right out so left hand turns out of you know out of the development on the 96 have been eliminated so you know anybody trying to go westbound on 96 it comes to the mercy of boulevard extension or to Mertensia, you know Mertensia, well, Mertensia. Mertensia. And one thing that stayed the same as you kind of mentioned is Mavis Tire. Yeah, Mavis Tire is uh, still, you know, one of the we call phase one initial uh, proposed tenants. Um, nothing has changed in the plan with respect to them. You know, they have been located further away from the road to you know, soften the, the effect of, you know, their facility, you know, that that way what we have is the community service type businesses out by Route 96, kind of with the furtherance of that Main Street um, overlay district objective. Great. Um, Sam, Ron, any comments so far? Uh, no, I, I just think that the planning board conducted a very thorough review and their report was filed with the town board previous to tonight's meeting, um, they found that the proposed design changes um, complement not only the uh, empty of the major thoroughfare overlay district, but the Main Street overlay district as well. And the state DOT is very pleased to note that we have, in essence, uh, eliminated some Turning movements there on Route 96 in this area, which helps to maintain the safety of traffic moving through the corridor. Um, the location shown on the drawing for the new signalized intersection in the future, when conditions warrant, where it was approved by the DOT, they're they're pleased with it, and uh, work has started on that that project. We have requested from um, this applicant, Pharmacy Market Center, traffic trip generation uh, information, which I heard tonight is underway. We did receive today from uh, BME Associates, the engineering firm representing the project to the east, the Farmington GLN project. Um, and we are waiting to hear it back on the uh, GNA property over there, the Barnaby Commons uh, parcel. Um, just a side note on that parcel, 
Uh, they originally wanted to put a new signal life intersection on Route 332 there for where all these comes out in KFC. And the state DOT did not want that. It uh, was not in keeping with the official corridor plan. And it was uh, abandoned. They also notified the owners of that property that uh, before they do any further development of that site, they were going to have to find an alternative uh, route of access to the site, which the eventual continuation and completion of the first of Boulevard um, Road Highway project would satisfy them. So there's three uh, main characters that are involved with looking at this equity issue. And uh, we'll hopefully get some information and meet with state DOT to uh, further resolve all these concerns. Yeah, so just for the public's knowledge, the piece of property, make a piece of property between AutoZone and Burger King has planning board approval for a bank. It reliant federal, reliant federal credit union. And then there's still um, property space on that property for another bank. So or to or restaurant or whatever. whatever. Yeah. So they know the owners, developers of the land, they know that past Reliant Bank, they're going to have to create access out to Mercer Boulevard, which is on this project to the east here is is the entrance beginning of Mercer Boulevard. So explaining the next piece over from tops, we might as well cover it all because what he asked on social media was going on there um, for the four lots up front where the Mercer Boulevard is starts from 96. That's correct. Uh, that is a project of a commercial highway oriented uses along the frontage. Interior is what is known as flex space office buildings, which is a combination of uh, high tech uh, industrial types of uh, uses, commercial ventures, um, something that is right now uh, a hot ticket item in a number of communities. And uh, we're pleased to see that the applicant over there is. Uh, use the opportunity to start developing that land for that purpose. Yeah, so the road coming off in 96 that will have access to the Tops property, but that, that property to the east of the Tops property, the road comes in and swings around before, behind the four lots. Right. And goes to a certain point that will eventually, when the rest of that property gets developed, potentially will, and potentially will immerse you. Mercer will go south to where the circle is now by Farmington Gardens and it'll hook up with the road, the existing road that's there. So everybody gets the big picture. Um, and no more number, any questions? Comments? All right, public comments. Please state your name for the town clerk. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, 617600 drive. Um, I have a question about the gas station. Um, I came here when you guys were talking about Burns Dairy, and I asked why we needed a fifth gas station within a two mile radius of the ones we already had. And the answers that I got were, well, we need a gas station between Farmington and Victor. We need competitive gas pricing, and this is going to help us get that. We need a less con a gas station in a less congested area than 332 and 96, so this would be a better fit for residents, and we could avoid that area. And then, kind of threw in for good measure, they had good ice cream. So I'm back here again. We got another gas station. Now it's going to be our sixth gas station within a two-mile radius. We already have one between Victor and Farmington, Burns Dairy. I drove around and I looked at all the prices on all the gas stations, and they're all exactly the same. I 
Google Victor, I Google Rochester, I Google a bunch of different towns, all the same prices. So I don't see where it being very competitive or making it more competitive. As we already have the gas station that you guys wanted to stay away from the congestion on 332 and 96. We got the ice cream. We got an ice cream stand, I believe, going down the road. So my question again is, why do we need a six gas station in a two-mile radius? What benefit is it to us as farming communities? And as Mike mentioned, the house owners, it's more of a convenience and a discount to the customers that shop at Tops. It's they don't want to be in competitive with the other gas stations, or they claim that they're not competitive with other gas stations. It's a service that they offer the Tops customers. Well, the top can offer a lot of things. Doesn't mean that it's beneficial to the residents of Farmington. Adding another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gas station. They wouldn't put a gas station in there if they didn't think it was going to be useful. Tops thinks it's, it's going like, to be useful. Of course, because it's going to make money for them. Of course, they're going to think it's useful. What is the use to us as the farmers and residents? If you shop at Tops, you may save money by buying the gas there after you purchase groceries. I don't know. Yeah, that's well, a, I think that's a good that. question to get maybe some answers. Not everybody shops at Tops. Not everybody's going to get gas at Tops. I'm a, I'm a member of the Burns Dairy now. I get a discount there. Okay. It's working. Yeah. So yes, it is. That one is working. I, I will give you that. How many are, how many guests are we going to have to get what? Well, it's not, first of all, it's not really a gas station. It's a fueling kiosk. It what has, is the it has limited, it has It has limited pumps. We're not putting eight pumps in and we're not trying to draw the public in. You know, um, Tops has been consistent only from the standpoint that their shoppers continue to ask them for it. You know, what's the status of whether or not they're going to provide fuel? Um, and it's not, you know, they're not, they don't engage in price wars with Burn Dairy, Exxon, and all the rest of it. If you buy and you buy however many dollars worth of groceries, your receipt gives you however many cents off on a gallon. And you know, they've operated these at their you know, stores over the years, and you know, it's it's passed by. You picked up your groceries, you get your fuel, you go back out. That's why there's only a limited amount of pumps. You know, they're they're not trying to compete with the rest of the gas station business. This is not a branded operation where Exxon is requiring eight you know, dispensers and you have to have you know, X, Y, and Z. This is truly a convenience for and because the store managers and management continue to be asked, you know, why do they think that that would be provided? Similar to BJ's. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Anybody online? Do we know Dave? Yeah, they do have people online. Okay. Do we know if there's any questions online? Okay, I got a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Um, my cattle, I live up on Plum Blossom. I own a business uh, right across the street from all this happening. <clears throat> and I guess I came here too, and I'm kind of glad. So that's only going to be a two lane road. That you're not going to increase the size of the road at all. He said you're doing so right now without all that there. When people are pulling out of those businesses right there, and the speed limit is 45 there. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you sometimes you pull out, there's so much traffic there. You, you got a hammer to get out of out of an entrance. Are you guys going to widen that road and put like a turning lane in the center? maybe add a lane because the way it is right now i'm seeing you putting all that in there no matter if they're turning right or not they're still going to be going up and down 96 either way that's going to be just packed so it's like on a, on a saturday pulling out ads on auto it's crazy i mean you have to sit there for five minutes sometimes and wait for traffic to break you got to catch the light if you don't catch the light you're not getting out um that i wish you guys would look into we need a turning lane in the center so people can get out of the crazy traffic. 
um, for um, there's, I don't know, the building in the back behind me there, uh, electric car companies going in there. So there's going to be some more businesses popping up in there. And I don't think two lanes is going to be enough. Secondly, the tops thing. Um, I, I'm people, sorry, sir. You, 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 well, where exactly are you talking about? The right, right across the street, pulling out into traffic right there. Between uh, you're talking about 96, though? Yeah, pulling out in 96. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a lot of traffic. I mean, you guys travel it, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you try pulling out of um, Family Dollar or whatever is over there, I mean, you got to wait for a while. We pull out, you're pulling out full throttle sometimes, get out on the track. That's a lot, I think. Um, and also the gas station thing, since and by 25, they're going to try to make everything electric. Are they going to put electric kiosks or anything in there? Do you have tops? How about that convenience thing like they have at the mall? Because that would be something to add when you got so many gas stations and if everything is going to be turning electric eventually, you're going to have a lot of gas stations, but nothing. Yeah, either us or the planning board is going to be talking to all the developers about adding electric charging stations. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. So the, the one good thing right across from the dollar store is because that's a right in and right out. Right. And eliminates people trying to turn off there. And then the entrance to the east, the road to the east. Where the top property has to go on to the other piece of property there for mm -hmm. Mercer Boulevard, that's going to end up being a signalized intersection. Yeah, right at the end there? Yeah. yeah. Well, in the far right of the picture. Well, you said the state was going to be doing a count on this as far as like no, there's the a, state doing any kind of a, a review on the traffic that's going to be in a two lane road. Whether you're turning out right or not, you'll still have. Yeah, we, we've been in constant touch with DOT since. Yeah. 2019, um, but the traffic studies we're, we're mentioning are firms, SRF associates, it's not DOT that provides the traffic data. Yeah, I think that should be looked into because that right now it's just, even if you're making a right out of some of these places, it's tough, you know. So I guess that's, have you guys ever looked into that on this plan? I don't, yeah. Ryan. Or the state of Okay. Yeah, we we probably lead any other municipality in the region, nine counties, mm -hmm. for traffic management, and you can talk to the state UTA you know, to confirm that. Right. We have designed an official highway corridor plan that shows the location of existing and future planned signalized intersections. This location was originally approved by the state DOT after their review. It has been since moved further to the east. There will be some marking in, uh, improvements mm -hmm. for left turn movements into the uh, Mercer Boulevard. Uh, in the future, uh, their long range plans may include uh, the demolition of the old Griffith building and the putting in of a fourth signal, which is on the official corridor plan map. The issue here is instead of having individual curb cuts all up and down this highway, we've eliminated a significant number of those to control this traffic so that the state doesn't have to go in and widen the highway right. and make you know, a dangerous situation worse by putting a third lane uh, in the middle for left turn. Yeah, I was just, I, I've driven that. I've been, you know, I drive that a lot and I have business there. So I know once you get past burned there and you're headed down, I mean, there's going to be a lot of cars piled up going up and down that area. Yeah, Mr. Supervisor, could I ask? Just, I must have missed what business you have with. Advent Auto. You have the Advent Auto? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I know it, it's pretty congested there now. I mean, it's going to do all that. Well, it's cool, but I think that should look at obviously already have looked at it. It's just farther down heading into Vicar. It seems like it's going to be a pretty heavy accumulation of people from Vicar coming down, especially on Saturday. But I guess that's what you guys do. You've done a traffic study or no? Yeah. DOT is looking at this yeah. for, our, for our project as well as you know, the project to the east. Uh, you know, in order, to, in order to put this intersection in, there are, as Ron mentioned, 
uh, and various improvements that will extend from Route 332 you know, to this entrance. Um, DOT has looked at this in terms of all that. That's how we got to the right in, right out only. And as Ron alluded, you know, the, the positioning of this is, is, you know, facilitates a potential fourth leg on the intersection and the same kind of planning that's happening over here in terms of rear lot and access management as well to help. You know, so uh, some of those things are outside the purview of this project, but we have been working with the town, their engineer, and state DOT relative to all of those discussions over the years. And that's kind of, you know, that's how this got to the to this point. You know, the, the improvements and the discussions with DOT have been like I said, the project for C we'll see how it turns out. Right? Yeah. You, you probably noticed that they, they had to make improvements. Oh, yeah. just for Generation Bank. Right. We made improvements for Myers instead of having a second curb cut right next to Family Dollar or Family Dollar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, the in and out thing, thing. It's just one step what it is out there. It just seems like a deal, you know, somebody's trying to turn in or something like that. But I guess whatever. Okay. <laughs> I got a question. What things to me? I mean, again, uh, let me use the example of Eastview One. People wouldn't go to Eastview One and put in a shoe store or a jewelry store if they didn't think they were going to make money. And it's the same way with the banks. It's, it's, not, it's they, also not a new bank. Pardon? It's also not a new bank. Canadian National Bank is in the plaza. They are well, they're, they're also, we mentioned the federal yeah. uh, credit credit union. Right. If they wouldn't long term lease or purchase that property if they didn't think that was a good location to do business with the growth that's in front of you. Coming out of tops, you're not going to be able to go straight across to Dollar no. Tree? No. So you're gonna to have to go up and make a U-turn. You could turn an Advent Auto and turn around then. <laughs> <laughs> you take a left. You take a left. You take a left. And then a right in the dollar turn so it's true. Yeah. 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 You'd have to go out to the intersection and catch a light yeah. and go across. Yeah. Right. Which I would think would be safer than trying to mm -hmm. go straight across with all the turning. Well, if it's a if it's a wide out, you wouldn't be able to go straight. You have to now, there's a right. traffic light. And if you look at the right side of the screen, you go out to that, you'd be able to take a left half the traffic light, which would be controlled, and then a right <coughs> into right wires or the dollar store. Right. Or right. Hey. Mm -hmm. Free plug. Uh, I'll just ask again anybody online want to make a comment? Let's, let's know. You do have people online, uh, does not look like anybody's coming off of me to make a comment. There is no comments in chat. No comments in chat. Okay, thank you. Um, staff, any other comments? Okay, okay what we're going to do is continue this public hearing to a future date. We're waiting to get all the traffic data in. We'll have a meeting um, with the owners of the properties. Once we look at that data, and run. And stay okay. Uh, that was my next thing out of my mouth. Okay. And the state DOT uh, to discuss everything. Um, because eventually, as the property south of all these, the forget how many acres are there. It's about 15. And, and the property to the east of Tops, once they start building their office properties in the Mercer Boulevard, extends. Out to 332. At some point, what the DOT uses the word warrants will require a signal light at 332. It may not be to the property across the street south of Kentucky Fried Chicken has developed, but at some point, that's the, another location on 332 for a signal light, like four other spots on 332 for future development. Okay. Just a general comment that I know has come up numerous times in different forums. 
96 and 332 are state roads. They dictate the speed limits. The town can certainly request a change in speed limit, but the state so far has not been very forthcoming or not been forthcoming at all in changing any speed limits on 96 or 332. I just wanted to get that on the record. Yeah, thank, thanks for doing that because <laughs> we have requested <coughs> many times a reduction on 332 and uh, have been denied. So, and it's out there in social media, we should do that. No. Again, the same thing is when we ask to reduce speed limit on the road north of the throughway, and we got denied because we don't have the right to set our own speed limit even on town roads. We also want to keep the flow in the south. So, yeah, no and, idea of winding up the uh, 332. Uh, yeah. The whole concept is about it. Yeah. It's it's crazy now when you're coming off through a at 70 mile an hour. Yeah. You know, and you get a 55, they don't slow down unless that signal light at Club Road turns red. Um, all stuff we can address with the DOT in the future. We, we Brought it to their attention as soon as they said they were going told or no told loose and what they wanted to do. All right, thank everybody for questions. As I said, we'll continue this public hearing. We'll actually publish another legal notice when we know we're going to have a continuation of the public hearing. Uh, this is recorded to be on YouTube, Farmington and one. YouTube, along with our early meetings, I think since November, we're taking town board meetings, zoning boards, and request ZBA meetings. So, thank you, everybody. We're going to have a motion to continue the public hearing. So, so moved by Mike. Aye. Second by me. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. We'll go to the regular agenda. Thanks, Mike. Yes. Thank, thank, you. thank you, everybody, for your questions. Wait a second, then we need pledge. All right, uh, this time we're ready to stand for the pledge of allegiance. And Tim, you want to lead us, please? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Tim. Next thing on the agenda is approval of the town board meeting minutes from April 12th. So, motion. Thank you. And uh, any abstentions, corrections, changes? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Privilege of the floor or public concerns? Anybody can sign here first? Privilege of the floor or public concerns? That's fine. Anybody online? Privilege of the floor or public concerns? Nope. Hearing none. Okay. Report to stay in the committee. Public works. Yeah, the wastewater treatment side of things. Um, our pump and motor have been shipped uh, for the digester number one mixing pump that we've talked about for several months. Um, just waiting for the company to make the necessary repairs. Uh, we also have been talking about the cleaning of digester one. Um, the company got in that was awarded the bid. Um, it took them about a week. Uh, digester is clean. Still have some work to do to, to remove the sludge from that project, but uh, that'll be taken care of shortly. Um, waiting on parts again for the UV system so that the company come out can come out and make those repairs before we get a party up for the season. And we had a recirculating pump on a, um, on a boiler system that needs some seals repaired on it. Um, bid, we awarded them and for the 332-96 intersection. Uh, water line replacement and a pre construction meeting has been set for next week for that. New York fence still waiting on the new security gate install. 
Uh, they have called in another stakeout, out, so we're hoping that work will take place shortly. And the crews have been busy over on Farmington, Canada Town Line Road, uh, working on some water line replacement there, um, doing some flow testing and monitoring again south of Town Line Road, and also have replaced a few new water meters at some of our commercial accounts recently. Highway and parks, uh, we report kind of every week, but it's equipment maintenance, always ongoing. They did some site cleanup over at the property we purchased at 5648 Collette Road, um, just removing some metal and debris. Uh, there had been a house there that the fire department did a control burn on a month or so ago. They've been out doing plow damage, repair, topsoil and grass seed. If they don't have to go mess that up <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> any plowing. Um, they've been over in Glen Carlin doing some concrete repairs on some pet basins and also completed some soil and erosion training. Um, parks, kind of the same old parks buildings, bathrooms are now open, water's turned on. They're getting out picnic tables, trash can benches, all that stuff. And uh, the first of two playgrounds over at Beaver Creek Park um, is installed and they've been through and topsoil and seeded that. Um, building side, uh, we had our quarterly uh, uh, bug treatments here at all the facilities, uh, backflow preventers and sprinkler inspections, fire alarms, all that kind of stuff uh, ongoing. Uh, and we had some discussion about a new 10 wheel truck that even though we're not looking at it for this year's budget with the lead time on getting things, talking about ordering it now. So hopefully we can have it by the end of 2023. So um, those are just the lead times on equipment right now. That's about it from other works. And a 10 wheel truck uh, is up $20,000 from when we ordered one three years ago. 255,000 in one truck. Fix the bump body and plow equipment. It's crazy. Okay, Tom Operations. <coughs> operations about this morning. Uh, five resolutions we've discussed as they come up. Um, ongoing projects continue to um, do our Chapter 74 update uh, the town code. Um, Delaware River Solar uh, did finally have its pre construction meeting um, last Thursday, and we just uh, received the soil report. Um, for the property there, um, uh, town law has the, our solar law has uh, certain um, conditions that uh, have to be met based on um, the soils on the property that they want to build, and that's one of the reasons that we have the, the decommissioning plan. Um, Barnbrook subdivision uh, is finally looking at um, completing. What, I think it's the last section in there. Um, it's the last well, the last two two sections, seven A and B. Um, it took about 45 lots. Uh, the way it was originally designed, um, they're looking at they have to they have to redo that um, just due to uh, the need for uh, some stormwater control. So they're trying to reconfigure where the roadway runs, shifting some of the lots, um, uh, uh, what's it, kind of further to the west. I'm looking at the right way, um, and trying to get that uh, that final parcel um, approved. Uh, we have uh, a public hearing that we're going to be scheduling um, for the 24th of May. Um, it's updates to Chapter 165, the zoning law. Um, the Conservation Board um, has agreed. Um, they're now um, uh, participating in the New York State Highway Department of Transportation Adopt the Highway. Um, they've been picking up um, garbage along the Route 332 um, from 41 down to Townland Road. I think they went out for their first. Up and got, I think, 20 something bags of garbage. Right. Um, and they plan on doing that uh, a couple times a year. Um, I think so they're the only conservation board in the area that's uh, doing an adopt the highway for a state road right now. Um, the uh, Department of State, or the, uh, the Department of Transportation, will hopefully be putting up our no, no standing signs along 332. Um, Near 96, they said there's been some issues with the tractor trailers parking on the side of the road and causing uh, visibility issues for um, cars trying to pull out the plazas. And the uh, building department will report on um, 
their permit numbers and activity. And they can call in. Thanks, Nate. Uh, report to other town officials. Uh, supervisor, <clears throat> this Friday we have a bid uh, to realign a portion of the Oak Road uh, water line near the New York State Freeway. I'm working on a contract for the asbestos removal in the lower level, uh, it's the floor tile downstairs in here in the town hall. Yesterday, uh, we attended along with the assessor, the assessor aid, a meeting. Uh, Planning for the 2023 revaluation re of town property, along with the town of Canandaigua. Our new assessor is on board. Uh, he'll be here Thursday and Fridays in the town of Canandaigua, Tuesday and Wednesdays, and Monday he'll alternate with uh, locations. Um, so, just for the word, because the last two newsletters I post in recent sales and then what the assessed value is and it's gotten everybody excited that you know this year is a big rebound but it's not so what's going out this year is 300 letters to people that are like new homes and improvements like additions pools and sheds those are the ones that are getting an increase in their assessment this year the 100 rebound will be next year that starts in june and goes through uh last march time frame and uh, we'll be working the meeting the reason for the meeting in ontario county was working with the uh, ontario county planning office and um uh, discussing having them assist us with the revaluation not only here but in the town of Canadawa, uh, helping with the especially the commercials and some of the residential rebounds for 2023. So we need more to come on that in the future. And so that's all I got. Highway Parks. Um, yeah, more, a few things to add tonight. Um, I do have some interview on Thursday afternoon for a mechanic position. Um, Crossed on that. I work out. Um, I was going to report it on the uh, chamber signs that we got all the hardware and all the posts in for the four by three signs. Um, so I shouldn't say most of the hardware, lack of a few, but okay. I got the bolts down, the Jake's bolts down to Tom Ewing today that he's going to paint. So I had those. I didn't speak to Tom. Tom was busy. Yeah, I don't know where the signs are at. Yeah. Um, I got a call on the way home tonight from the sheriff's. That we had property damage down to Mertensia Park. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, there was a young man and his sister, and he was teaching her how to drive a car. Mm -hmm. And uh, Instead of hitting the brakes, she hit the gas, went through the tennis court fence, and into the pole that separates the tennis court and the basketball court. Basketball court. Mm -hmm. so, Perfect spot. So we got some, uh, I'm going to have to get somebody down there and get a evaluation on that. Good luck. We've been trying to get. New fence material put in water and sewer entrances for three months. <laughs> um, and that's what we do with Chris Park today, and the grass is actually growing around the thick. Yeah. It's starting to grow. That's some good news down there. Yep. Can't wait for it. Thanks. And we do have cameras down there. But apparently, they must have realized the damage is bad enough they had to call 911, anyways. Um, I'm not sure who what I'm not sure who called called it in, but either they did themselves or yeah. they called it stuck. Could have been stuck in the fence. Oh, went all the way through the fence. Yeah, back so maybe, the yeah. They ripped this bumper off and put it in the back of the car. So. <laughs> all right. Keep us up, keep us updated on that. Come through. Busy uh, sending out our gallery renewals for next month and collecting more so 
Sure does still. Hopefully they have data on where we are, but shut up. Um, I don't like this book today. Yeah, we have a resolution tonight. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Why aren't you? Um, there's been a lot of residents calling about fixing their yards where we dug them up over the winter through other weeks and such. We're trying to get done. This rain is just, I just got a call from a vendor yesterday said that they had got to. That's the first one. And then it rained like crazy last night. So yeah. their tops are probably off. Yeah, we almost had an inch of rain last night. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it started at seven o'clock. Yeah, but I was still drunk from the oh. anesthesia. <laughs> really, it's only. Uh, just want to give a quick reminder uh, that we're seeing more of this people parking across the town parking lot or town sidewalks. Uh, and the code clearly states that you cannot block the sidewalks or any of the town trails. Uh, so we will be warning people here coming up shortly. And then a reminder about days getting into the grass cutting season. And we have to make sure that grass gets cut before it gets to six inches per pound of coat. So, and not to blow it into the gutter. And not to blow it out of the road or gutter. So, yeah. so those are things that uh, we remind people this time of the year just as a reminder. To not to yeah, I was driving down a Town Road yesterday, and I'm pulling up to an intersection, no stop sign, and I see a lady pushing a baby carriage, and she like cuts across the road, not anywhere near the crosswalk. <laughs> and then I looked over, there's a car blocking the sidewalk. She can't come down the sidewalk to cross mm -hmm. the road. So, told building department about it yesterday, went by today, it wasn't there. Spent some time, saw the grass growing in Beaver Creek Park. Come back, the car's there again, across the side. So I went and banged on the door, and nobody came out. And okay, it's time for them to take care of it. So, so we will be addressing those things. Yeah. It happens, unfortunately. Planning board. And he said Farmbrook uh, Phase 7A subdivision will be on the agenda, along with the CAPS final subdivision. Uh, two lot subdivision will be on the agenda as well as safe place storage, uh, preliminary site plan. Those are the three items that will be on. All right, thank you, Ron, Director of Planning and Development. Yeah, just to follow up a little bit on uh, Councilman Bowerman's presentation, the uh, 10 page town ops report, which is done every two weeks, um, is posted on the town website with photos. Um, and you can see uh, that the uh, conservation board uh, had a very busy Saturday picking up uh, 20 some bags of uh, garbage trash along uh, Route 332. Um, hats off to the conservation board for stepping up. I think that speaks very, very uh, well of their mission in life and, and their leadership. Uh, Conservation Board also is working on signage for Hickory Rise. Um, it's not by accident that the design of Hickory Rise over there left untouched two rather large hills, which are drumlands. And the Conservation Board has developed some signage that they'll be putting up, or the Parks Department will, excuse me, uh, this summer. Uh, explaining how the glacier actions uh, created those drumlins and helped to educate uh, the residents of the area the benefits of preserving that uh, phenomenon. We still haven't heard anything on the uh, cap sidewalk grant. Uh, nobody has. It was supposed to be out in February, and here it is almost May. Uh, we're waiting the end of May for the report from the students from Syracuse University on the uh, potential mixed use of the adjacent park land over here. Almost said park land, I shouldn't do that. Um, for recreational purposes. And uh, we do have uh, coming up 
a public hearing where we uh, redefined some terminology that we found outdated for conditioned mini storage buildings and unconditioned mini storage buildings and uh, accessory structures and things of that nature. So that'll be coming up on the 24th of May. That's it. Thanks, Ron. Uh, town engineer, Bill. Yep, just a couple projects to add. Um, we're waiting on approval from DOH for the Blue 332 water line replacement project. And also waiting on DEC approval for Wagon Road pump station. So we hope to get that soon so that we can move those forward. And then uh, we're almost done with the design of Klein and Brownsville intersection as well. So close in on that. And Klein and Brownsville will be next year's project. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, on the assessor side, as I mentioned, uh, Paul Pernt, ARNDT, is our assessor. We're sharing him with the town of Canandaigua. Uh, glad to have him on board. He's been an assessor in Pates, Chile, and Greece in his past history. Uh, under recreation, um, we do have a uh, Summer help still needed for the six weeks we have our summer recreation program. And uh, Mark has asked us, we put it out on social media and emails, just trying to get the word out to uh, get some more uh, help for the summer rec program. And on the finance side, we did have a finance committee meeting today. Uh, we reviewed the final 2021 uh, audit numbers. From our auditor. We reviewed the first quarter revenue, January to March of this year. We reserved our we reviewed our reserve balances for all our funds. We discussed the video lottery kernel allocations for the years 2022 through 2025. And we set the 2023 budget schedule. Um, already the departments in water and sewer and highway and parks. They have their five-year capital plan sheet and uh, they'll have a deadline on that. But then in July, we send out the actual budget sheets for each department. And then we do back, I think, the first week in August. And then I'll come board and start doing uh, budget sessions in September. Uh, I think that's it. Communications are on file. Reports and minutes are on file. Okay, resolutions. First resolution is a long one. Continuing de deliberations on the action involving the adoption of the local law, which would authorize the amendment to town official zoning map. As provided in Chapter 165, Zoning Law Article 3, Section 165, 12, Zoning Map for rezoning of three parcels of land identified as tax map for count numbers 290139, 2901-40, 2901-411 2901 from GB General Business and Sun Zoning for the Farmington Market Center project to an unspecified date. So Moved by Councilman Gazelle. Second. Second by Councilman Bowman. Any staff, any further comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who's a resolution rescheduling two of our town board meetings? So, mm -hmm. Second. First and second. So basically, uh, the primary election date. Uh, falls on our town board meeting and the November election date falls on our town board meeting. So we're rescheduling them to the Wednesdays after uh, both election dates. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three's a resolution authorizing the establishment of water credit for Country Mats project in the full amount of $417,376.60. So motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Board's resolution authorizing establish a letter of credit for Tom in New York 
project in the total amount of one hundred forty thousand one hundred fifty eight dollars and forty two cents. So second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Why does the resolution authorize the transfer of funds from the 2019 BLT capital reserve accounts once the public referendum period is complete? So, second. Motion and a second. Again, this is a normal process we go through to assign BLT money to capital projects. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Six, the resolution accepting the final 2021 audit reports from Raymond F. Wager of Division of MMB and Company for the Town of Farmington and the Canada of Farmington Water Fund. So moved. Second. Portion of the second. Can we do uh, audits every year? All in favor? Aye. 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 Seventh resolution declaring miscellaneous equipment from the town hall and highway department as surplus so that it can be disposed of at auction or discarded. So moved. Second. Motion second. Uh, examples battery backup, shredder, uh, punch cards from the tenants, old style enterprise software, and so on. All in favor? Aye. 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 A is the resolution operating the setting of a bid date for public bidding of water main fittings and supplies from the Canada of Farmington Water District, Tom Line Road, um, main, water main project for May 6 at 10 30. Oh, second. And this was discussed in uh, public works this morning. All in favor? Aye. 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 The very next one, the resolution operating the setting of a bid date for the annual 2022 water supplies. Also on May 6, 2022, at 11 a.m. So, second. Which is the second. This is a, would you say, 61 different items we put out for bid more water parts. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That is a resolution authorizing the town supervisor to sign a residential maintenance, excuse me, management service agreement with the Cell Waste Services on Ontario County LLC. Regarding the disposal of sludge in the Ontario County land. So, okay. They finally got some new management and realized that we didn't have, they didn't have a contract with us. We've been taking sludge there for 20 years. So, that's the contract. And this, this is a contract that price goes up uh, from $50 to $55 a ton. Uh, this year, $60 a ton in 2023. And then after that, through 2025, it follows the consumer price index for increases of sludge, which, uh, what did you plan to try to think? 100,000, 100, more than 100,000 this year. Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 11th resolution to recall and amend resolution 325 2021, correcting the total amount to be filed with a letter of credit, auto wash project 6214, state route 96, which should read $46,285.78. So moved. Second. Again, the numbers were transposed. All in favor? Aye. 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 12 was a resolution classifying under the provision of Article 8, New York State Environmental Conservation Law, law Part 617.5, State Environmental Quality Review Regulations, the action involving the adoption of local law, amending Chapter 165, Zoning Law, Articles 2, 5, and 6, regarding general improvements for erecting and maintaining commercial speed signs, accessory structures, and special permit criteria for many warehouse sites. As being a type two action. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Uh, Ron or Dan, you want to comment about how long we spent on this? <laughs> Hours. Right? Hours. Just writing that synopsis thing, please? Yeah, yeah, just writing the, <laughs> the definition of it. Yes. I, I, there was a lot of staff involved, uh, planning board was involved. Um, so there, there's a lot of good information, a lot of thoughts. And, Right into it. So. One of the things we offer the residents is storage sheds. A lot of residents wanted to put in 
uh, bigger than 200 square foot storage sites, so it has to go to the zoning board for zoning board appeal application. We've increased that from 200 to 300 square feet. So that would encompass almost everything that we see coming for a permit. I mean, so the sizes there, yeah. you know, obviously, order bigger yeah. sizes like they are training storage buildings. So. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 13 is a resolution establishing a penalty date for all unpaid 2022 first quarter accounts located in the Canada Department and Water District and the Victor Sword District for May 3rd, 2022. So, second. Motion to second. Again, this also. Uh, discusses the late fee and then a tentative shutoff date of June 8th for those non paid bills. This is the first year within two years uh, that we're able to do uh, shutoffs. All in favor? Aye. 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 14 is abstract 8 of 2022 to pay bills, general fund $79,932.99. Highway fund ninety five thousand three hundred and fifty four dollars and twenty seven cents. Peter Creek Park six hundred and seventy three dollars and eighty cents. Town Science Capital Project forty eight hundred and fifty dollars. Hill Station Capital Project two hundred and ten dollars. Storm drainage forty eight thousand four hundred one dollars and sixty five cents. Fire Protection District one hundred ninety thousand forty one dollars. Lighting District fifteen hundred and fifty one dollars and five cents. Sewer District, $68,860.05. Water District, $40,861.83. Payroll deductions, $7,605.92 for a pro lab strat, $538,342.56. That motion, please. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any extensions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, this time, no training under $100. Totally unlike last meeting, we had a bunch of training. Uh, any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none. No executive sessions. No waiver of the rules. Sorry. Right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> All in favor? Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you, everybody.